Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. I'm joined this week as normal by Dan Innes, Nicole Dines, and, and Paul Strom. Dan, let's 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 start with you. What, what are your kind of key takeaways from the week? Well, um, the week's really be, still been dominated by that mega deal uh, that people have been talking about, and that's capital and counties agreeing that reverse takeover of Shaftesbury, and that's going to create a combined company worth £3.5 billion. That combined group's going to be called Shaftesbury Capital, um, and it's going to create a REIT, basically, with a portfolio of 2.9 million square feet across Covent Garden. Carnaby, Chinatown, Soho. Um, but that merged company is going to be led by the current Capco boss, Ian Hawksworth, and chaired by Jonathan Nichols, who's currently the chair of Shaftesbury. Elsewhere, CBRE Investment Management, they've set a 5 billion euro goal for its first open-ended pan-European logistics fund. CBRE Investment Management, they've launched a perpetual core plus pan-European logistics fund with an ambition to grow that. The fund's going to be called ELP, Europe Uh, logistics partners um, and it's going to be a new vehicle created in response to that demand from CBRE's uh, investment managers investors including those in the manager's last European value partners fund uh, which had a strong emphasis on building to sell logistics um, and reach that end of its investment period in 2020. In other news uh, we've been following that PGIM real estate that's the formerly known as Prudential Investment Management of course they completed two logistics investments uh, to the north of Paris And that first investment is the acquisition of a 240,000 square meter land plot for logistics in Avrigny, which is 70 k's outside of Paris. And the second investment uh, is the acquisition from Quartus Group of a 19,000 square meter logistic platform developed in Longay Saint Marie. Last week was also uh, the 10th anniversary of Elandai's Retail Rocks event, which brought many players out for a face to face uh, event in central London. Mark Robinson and Morgan Garfield, co founders of Landai, which now has over a billion pounds of assets under management. Um, they talked through a dynamic program discussing investment into retail, and that included panel sessions with people like Andrew Hilston from Ardent, who recently bought Touchwood, of course, Bruce Findlay, who's MD of retail at Landsec. The whole debate was really kind of ignited by Guy Battle, who's the chief exec of Social Value Portal, who lit up that debate talking about ESG as really just really should be the bare minimum that real estate business businesses are are doing and contributing back to society. So I really do think that's going to be something that we'll be coming back to. You know, that it was the sad um, anniversary of Grenfell Tower in London. Five years ago, the residential apartment block was engulfed in flames and left 72 people dead. You know, there was a memorial for that. And of course, that started a, a huge debate on the safety of buildings generally right across the world. So that was a, that was a sad anniversary, but uh, an important one to mark. And lastly, the Crown Estate, the Queen's real estate company, Company, they've set aside one and a half billion pounds to decarbonize their estate, which is larger than the amount that they were actually anticipating originally. Um, but that indicates that the cost of energy transition will be far greater than some property owners have already forecast. And of course, that comes back to the big topic, which we're all facing, of course, Richard, which is inflation. Interesting, particularly as well to, to note this week, not only rate rises in the UK, but the US central bank also announced its biggest interest rate rise for nearly 30 years and discussion around the Eurozone planning to raise interest rates for the first time in 11 years. And a lot of discussion as well at Pravada around what those interest rate means. I mean, we were one of 25,000 visitors who were there over the three days running a series of events and a very big focus there as well on ESG and social impact. Nicole, what what were your takeaways from, from some of those discussions? Yes, uh, Real Asset Media organized a couple of briefings focusing on different aspects of ESG in a sort of very practical sense, what companies are actually doing rather than than talking about. One was on creating effective strategies for ESG and impact, and a representative from ASR Real Estate emphasized the importance of close cooperation with tenants, how it is crucial to bring tenants on board to let them uh, know what's happening in order to make buildings sustainable and keep them sustainable. This applies to, to all sectors, they said. In the residential sector, ASR is just for example, 1,200 residential units to make them sustainable. But he said, you know, we couldn't have done it without the help of our tenants. Also, in the retail sector, they said they're fortunate to have progressive tenants, like the biggest supermarket chain in the Netherlands, which is uh, Albert Heijn, that's been installing solar panels on the roofs of all their supermarkets. So companies actually being proactive and doing things. And interesting, SR said that sometimes you have to be creative and also give incentives as well as give guidance. And they run competitions with uh, special awards 
votes for the tenants, they use the least energy, which is rather a fun way of, of doing things. Um, and another a briefing we ran was on maximizing ESG impact. And then this was very much focused on the importance of collecting and comparing data to give clarity to the market and clarity to investors and to enable everyone to really compare and evaluate the performance of buildings in a very practical way. And Rupia Shore of Park B said that in order to go beyond greenwashing, there has to be a need for disclosure of data for testing, verifying and uh, certifying. Everyone agreed that it's not an easy thing for the co for companies to do because there's not a tradition in real estate to be particularly transparent. You know, some companies, they said, think energy consumption is a company secret and should not be revealed. So there's a sort of change in mindset needed, but that's the direction of, of, of travel. And then finally, Real Asset Media did a really interesting briefing on Scotland, which is a very interesting initiative because Scotland is really leading the way in reducing carbon emissions in public buildings. And Scape Scotland has developed this life cycle model to provide clear standards for building and refurbishment and crucially also verification of whether over the long term the buildings are meeting the standards required. It's called the Net Zero Public Sector Building Standard, which is now voluntary, but it's set to become compulsory at some stage, which sets very clear objectives to companies and charts a very clear route from the feasibility stage to the detailed design to construction and then to the in-use verification with support provided to companies every step of the way from the design process all the way through for five years after construction. So it's really designed to help companies, you know, hold them by the hand every step of the way in order to reduce emissions. So that, that's a very positive development and hopefully we'll see more of these sort of very practical steps that companies are taking um, and governments are taking, as in the case of Scotland, to, to avoid greenwashing actually make a difference on the ground. Obviously also this week as well, further kind of inquiries into greenwashing, Goldman and Deutsche Bank, they're being looked at amongst others, um, which could have big impacts, I think, for the fund side. Paul, what have you been watching? Well, there's been a strong Dutch flavour to some of the news this week, perhaps because of Pravada. The German family-owned hospitality group Maritim Hotels has signed a new 50-year lease on the massive 500 million euro Congress Hotel, which Union Investment is developing in Amsterdam, opposite the city's central railway station and it's building a residential tower next door with nearly 300 apartments due to open next year the 110 meter high four-star hotel will provide uh, 579 rooms the 50-year lease compares with a european industry average of 20 to 25 years for for similar um assets and union said it signals both parties confidence in the in the revival of large conference formats after the covid uh, Pandemic. Meanwhile, Unibairo Damco Westfield is to sell the 87,000 square meter Almir Centrum in the Netherlands for 155 million to a group of private investors led by the UMB Group. Almir is close to Amsterdam, it's got a catchment of uh, 1.1 million people. URW uh, acquired the asset, which has got 140 plus retail units in 2002, and it was refurbished in 2008. So despite all the headwinds, war, inflation, rising interest rates, there is a suggestion of business as usual, although um, real assets are well positioned to capture the potential upside of rising inflation, according to M&G's mid-year global real estate outlook report. The investment manager does warn, though, that with increasing occupier demands, landlords need to work assets to achieve income growth and give portfolios long-term inflation protection. M&G said the, the war in Ukraine, which has put more pressure on inflation and the overheating US economy, as well as supply chain pressures, will be the key drivers of continued inflation through 2022. The UK property markets, it says supply side constraints stemming from Brexit are contributing to domestic inflation. M&G says that a consumer squeeze on e-commerce could uh, even affect the um, what it describes as previously buoyant logistics market. Uh, really interesting to see that news, especially around logistics as well. Um, big, you know, huge, huge amounts of, of focus on that at the moment again. Um, thanks very much, Dan. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the real asset markets. Mm -hmm.